In this video, I'll be looking at a common technique for uh, dealing with time series data that is growing, uh, where the variable is growing over time, and that's the use of uh, natural logs. Now, to briefly explain the mathematics uh, behind this, what I'm going to do, first of all, is just create a variable which increases by 5% uh, per period. So, just calling this variable y, I'll assume it starts off in initially in what we often call period naught at the value of 10. And then in the next period it needs to grow by 5%. So that means multiplying it by 1.05. 1 of course to keep the 10 and 0.05 the 5% growth. So copying this down now. get this so this variable has been starts off at 10 and then grows 5% each period now this is what's called compound growth of course because it's 10% it grows by 10% uh, uh, based on what it currently is not 10% of the starting value so if I graph this data so I think let's draw a simple line graph we get the uh, classic exponential growth curve with this typical shape here, this rising slope. This, of course, is what's called component or exponential growth. Now, the problem with illustrating data like this is that it's not clear whether the growth rate has changed or not. In fact, we know here that this has got a constant growth rate, but you might mistakenly think that because the curve is steeper here, that the um, variable is growing at a faster rate here than it is here, even though we know that's not the case. Now, if you draw the uh, plot, the what we call the natural logarithm of this data rather than the actual data, what you end up with is a linear relationship where the slope indicates the growth rate. Now the mathematics of this are here, very briefly, here is the equation of a variable growing exponentially. Um, y0 is the starting value, y t, t is the value, uh, the current value in period t, and uh, r here is the growth rate. Now it turns out that if you take the natural log of both sides, you end up with this equation which, as you can see, is a linear equation in the log of the value. A standard linear equation with a constant term here, and then this term here, where, of course, the, uh, the coefficient here, r, is the slope. So, as you can see, by putting it into logs, you end up with a linear relationship where the slope is given, uh, gives you the rate of growth. Now, I can illustrate this here if I take the natural log, now that's natural log, so it's ln. Don't use log because that's the log to base 10. You want the, as it says here, the natural logarithm. So taking the natural log of the first one here, then I copy down and it will do all the rest. Like that. And notice too that one advantage of plotting in logs is that the scale is, 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 is compressed significantly so you can put on more data. Notice the actual data went from 10 all the way up to 186, 187 nearly, whereas the logs only go from 2.3 to 5.2 5 5.3 ish. So it's a much more compressed scale uh, which means you can plot a, a larger range of data much more easily. So if I now draw a graph of this log data, as you can see, we end up with a linear relationship, as this equation indicated, and the slope of this line is the growth rate. Uh, and as you can see here, we can now see that there was a constant uh, growth uh, throughout this period. The fact that the line is getting steeper here doesn't indicate faster growth. Uh, in fact, it was a constant growth, which is indicated. Um, now, and the slope, as I say, is the growth rate. Now, the big advantage, therefore, is that if you plot data in logs, by looking at what's happening to the slope, you can see if there's any change in the growth rate. 
let's have a look at uh, actual example here. So what I've got here is data on the uh, what's called the real GDP gross domestic product of the UK economy annual data from 1948 to 2020. So this is the latest available data and um, if we plot the actual data uh, first of all you'll see how it's been growing over time. So let me highlight the data here and plot a line graph again. So there we have this is actual GDP like that okay so if you look at this you'll see that there is um, that it's been growing over time and as you can see there's, there's a, a, a underlying exponential curve here Obviously, there's lots of fluctuations. It's not uh, growing at the same rate every period, but there's underlying growth rates, uh, exponential growth here. But has the growth rate changed? Um, again, looking at this could be misleading. For example, you might look at this section here, which appears to be steeper than this section, and assume mistakenly that the growth rate was higher here than here. In fact, as we'll see, that's uh, not the case. It was the opposite of that. So the advantage of plotting the log of the data is that we'll be able to see what's happening to the growth rate. So let me find the natural log. Again, using the ln function. Like that. So I've now taken the natural log and I'm going to plot a line graph of this data. And once again, we end up with a more linear uh, relationship, as we saw. So let me label this log GDP. Now what we can see here, in fact, is that but because the slope indicates the uh, rate of growth, it's an average rate of growth, of course, here, because there is, obviously it, it, it's not a, it wasn't a continuous, uh, it wasn't growing, it's not growing at the same rate every period as in my hypothetical example. But here you can see, if we take, there's roughly two, three periods here, I think we can isolate, which I've indicated here. The first period, oh, let me, uh, before I do that, put on the actual dates here, of course, rather than just these numbers because this is actual data. So that's added the proper dates to the data here. And as I say, if you look at it, there appears to be three periods we could distinguish. This first period here, which goes from about from 48 up to 73, here and then the next period I, I think we could go from say uh, there's a little recession here of course but then if we go from 75 up to 2007 we have that period there again there are fluctuations recessions here in 80, the early 80s early 90s but that's roughly a similar period then of course there's the great recession of 2008 2007 uh, 2008 2009 so if we then take this next period here from 2009 to 2019, we can see that there's differences in the growth rate. It appears the growth rate here was greater than here and then greater than here. So by looking at the log of the data, we can see how the growth rate, average growth rate has, has seemingly declined over time, which is not apparent from the uh, graph, graph here of the actual data. Now how would I find the average exponential compound growth rate over these periods? Well, going back to the mathematics, you'll see that if we, this remembers the equation of the uh, log data, so 
If I want to find the growth rate r, I simply need to rearrange this equation um, to give me this. So as you can see, to find the um, average growth rate, compound growth rate, you simply find the difference in logs uh, between the log of the uh, last value, last period, and the log of the initial period. Divide that by t, which is the number of times uh, the uh, growth has occurred. So applying that to here, if we take this first period, 1948 to 1973, which appears to be this first period here, now notice that that is, if I just highlight over here, 1948 to 73 is 26 years, but of course the number of times that uh, growth occurred was 25 because of course it started at 1948 so t here uh, in the formula is not the number of actual uh, values but it's one less than that because it's we want the number of times it um, the value went up and, and since it started at the first one it went up 25 times in this case now in fact you can easily find that here by simply subtracting 1948 from 1973 so i'm going to do that here We've got 1973 minus 1948, which should give me 25 years, exactly. So let's do the next period I want to look at, 1975 to 2007. So let's take 2007, subtract 1975, which is 32. Uh, years of growth and then finally 2019 minus 2009 like that, which was 10 years of growth okay so now applying this formula here to find the uh, average uh, a compound growth rate for these three periods then this one we need equals now we need brackets so we do the substitute uh, the subtraction first so it's log of 1973 minus the log of 1948 divided by t which is 25 as we've seen which gives us 0 0.033919 uh, this uh, to need to multiply that to give us a percentage so I'll multiply this by 100 and I'll just reduce that down now to two decimal places which will be enough so on average growth in G real GDP over this uh, period was 3.39, 3 3.4% per annum. What about this next period here, 75 to 2007? Again, use the formula. So it's the log of 2007 minus the log of 1975, which is there, divided by 32 in this case, so 32 years of growth there, and times by 100. Two point six two percent. As you can see, the growth on average was lower during this period. Now, this final period here, two thousand nine to two thousand and nineteen. So again, it's the log of twenty nineteen minus the log of two thousand and nine. Divided by, in this case, 10, 10 years of growth. And that's going to be about 1.82%. 1, 1 so it's clear, as you can see now, that by using logs, we can see from the graph changes in the slope and hence changes in the growth, uh, growth rate. Um, and this is 
as you can see that's steeper than that and that which is and by calculating the average growth rate of these three periods we can confirm that gradual decline in annual growth rate um, now one other final point here about uh, logs it's also the case that for small percentage increases the difference between the log values uh, gives you the uh, growth rate um, the smaller the and the smaller the actual growth rate uh, the, the more accurate that is uh, to illustrate let me calculate here the percentage growth uh, uh, yearly annual percentage growth here in each year uh, first I'll calculate it exactly from the data then I'll use the change in the log and see how close that is so here to find the change of course we need to find the actual change divided by what it was and then times by 100 so equals that minus that to give me the actual change in GDP divide that by what it was to start with times by 100 that will give me the growth rate 3.32 percent I'll if I copy the formula down it should do all the rest correctly like that now let's find the difference between the log values because this uh, uh, gives an approximate indication of the growth rate and uh, the lower the actual growth rate the closer that approximation so sometimes people use the change in the log value to measure the growth rate rather than calculating exactly and particularly if you're using log data you can do that so this first one is simply this minus this just the change in the log value gets me 0.03 again I need to uh, let me I need to put brackets around that just to get it so I can multiply, then multiply by 100 give me a percentage of course I've got to make sure the bra brackets of course to make sure the subtraction is done first so as you can see you get 3.27 which is uh, close uh, quite close to the actual value here as I say, the smaller the actual value, the closer the log uh, approximation will be. So if I copy down now to do all the rest. There are the growth rates used, uh, calculated exactly. And also by using this approximate measure of the change in the log. And as you can see here, for example, when the actual growth rate is quite small, the here again here again the log is very close when it's rather larger as here or here it's a little bit uh, it's not quite as accurate but it's near enough generally speaking so that's also something that you often see done with log data okay so i hope that shows you how to you can uh, utilize natural logs to uh, a better deal with variables which are growing over time